So we're going to talk about the Solaris 2. The Solaris 2 is new as of last summer, and they, they took the features of the Solaris and they supercharged them. Uh, a built-in projector. Now, the projector is even, even more uh, powerful than ever before. And the first time I heard about a projector in a sewing machine, I, I couldn't quite understand what the benefit would be. But truly, it has changed the way I sew and quilt and embroider. That projector will position your embroidery is show you exactly where it's going to be in the hoop. And I'm going to show you that. It's just quite amazing. But it's not just for uh, embroidery. This machine has the largest embroidery area in the industry. That's a, that hoop size is 16 inches long by 10 and 5 eighths inch. I love that ship that you're seeing stitched out there. It is just giant and it's like true life. And so the, you will, will enjoy the fact that you can embroider large embroidery pieces or also combine many embroideries to make a whole scene of embroidery. And this, there's over 1,300 built-in embroidery designs, and they even added some more. See, uh, if you have the original Solaris machines, you can add upgrades. The Solaris 2 has both upgrade 1 and 2 built into it, but with upgrade 2, they added a lot of beautiful designs. And let's go ahead. Kathy's going to give us a tour of some of the designs they added. And um, go ahead and take it, Kathy. Thank you, George. Okay, so, you know, you can see pictures of the designs on the machine, but seeing them stitched out, that takes it to the next level. So here's some of the cool designs that they've included in the Solaris 2. So they have different categories, and they've, and they've added designs in some of the categories that are really beautiful. Now, here's the, here's the um, flamingos. This is stitched on cork. This is a themed collection, so you can make a quilt out of this. You could put it all together. Now, the, George mentioned the projector. One thing that's really cool with the projector is this. You can project your design onto the fabric, the exact fabric that you're going to be using, and that's going to help you make some color choices. So this could be projected down onto the cork. The cork changes colors, and you can see exactly which of your threads will be the perfect stitch color for that design. So that's a great advantage. Now, here Here's, the, oh my gosh, the designs are so large. Look at this beautiful elephant. Look at the detail in the stitching. This is stitched on the burlap, so you can see exactly how this design is going to come up on the, on the fabric before you stitch it, so you know before you go. Here's another little design that coordinates with those others. See how they've taken the larger design, and they have a smaller complement to it. So, that means that you can take all these different designs and put them together in a collection. Now, one thing they've also done is they've added several designs that are um, hexagonal. So why did they do that? Well, this is a great design, made a candle mat, and made a pillow, but some of the new features on this Solaris 2 is when you do the quilting around the border, you can now do it around a hexagon. So you can take this particular design and the machine will help you add the quilting all around the edge. That's a fantastic feature. So here's some other stuff. This is part of the new collection, but I want you to see this one. Look at the size of that design. Look at how it gradiates on in. That is absolutely beautiful. Add a little bling, this design takes it to the next level. You can do stitches, decorative stitches in the embroidery unit. And I want you to explain this one to me, George. I've seen this, and well, I know these are sewing badges, but this is a biker badge. How well, did that happen? See, in California, we have bike riders that are quilters. So these are quilting biker gangs. And so I those are the it. patches. So <laughs> I can put these on my leather jacket. That's right. And I can be part of the sewer biker gang. That's right. I've always wanted to do that. You're I really it. have. Because that's a that's a lingering, that's a lingering desire of mine. Now Denise sent this in, and these are some of the designs that are built in this Solaris. These are some of this the ocean life. But she's done something great. She has taken and she's made some fabric 
to match. So she has, this is fabric, but this is one of the decorative fills. I think I'm going to get an opportunity to show this to you a little bit later. And she's made her own fabric here to go as part of the quilt. So we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but the designs are pretty amazing. And remember, they don't have to be the color that they are in the machine. With Color Visualizer, you can see all kinds of crazy color combinations that you might not have even thought of before. So she's taken this to the next level. But the designs in this machine, George, they're just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I, I think you agree. The, the, the designs are amazing. They're large, the detail, and they really came out with a lot of themes so you can put things together, like the different animals and things like that. Uh, so let's go on to some of the other amazing, amazing uh, features of this machine. So one thing it's always been known for is its lettering capability. 24 built-in fonts, and I can uh, modify the fonts in all different ways. I can do multi-lines, I can edit down to the letter, and I can also modify the letter within the word. I mean, so there, there's something about the fonts I really enjoy, and I have more capability on this machine than most any other machine. Um, Beautiful large monograms. I've got a couple of these stitched out. I'm going to show you samples of, but they are bold. They're great for pillows, for gifts. Just amazing. Now, this machine is a Wi Fi uh, product, and you have uh, direct Wi Fi connectivity with the Palette 11 software. Plus, you know, there's all, all, always uh, different updates that happen uh, with machines. Now we can update just via Wi-Fi. You don't have to download to a USB, and that's much more convenient. So this is truly a product that you'll enjoy year after year because they'll keep adding things to it. Now, because it's Wi-Fi, they have a couple of different apps. One of the apps, uh, and these are free apps, one of them will monitor your design process. It will tell you if there's a color uh, thread, uh, a color change needed, uh, if the thread breaks, or, or it, the, pro the total progress. I like this because sometimes I'm in another room and I'm doing something, I'm multitasking, and this will warn me when I have to go and change a thread. So that's a cool feature on this because it is a Wi-Fi product. Now, the screen is really what makes all the difference on this here. 16.7 million colors are in this high definition capacitive screen. It's 10.1 inches. And so a lot of, when, when you're embroidering, the color of the thread and the fabric makes all the difference. And this screen enhances your whole in embroidery experience. And so this is something I really enjoy showing. And I will show you some of the different ways you can change the color of the stitches. Now, the screen, there's so many wonderful functions, different things that in one push of a, a button, it changes your design in all different ways. I can create an applique instantly out of design. I can take and, and change it and do uh, motifs like an echoing and I can do background fills. And I, I love, I want to show you this here because it, there's so many cool things you can do right on the screen. Um, they now have the capability, uh, because I can take and make a stamp of a design, I can do, if, if it's something like in this case, a letter, I can do it the stamp of the internal part of the design too. So you can do background fills both in the design and outside the design. And so just as uh, uh, Kathy was pointing out that quilt where you was doing background fills, you're able to determine if you want it through the whole fabric area or just around the design. And so that's a cool feature and they updated that from years past. Um, you can now access not only your quilting, your, your echo quilting, all your decorative fills from IQ Designer now can be accessed right from your embroidery field. And so it has 42 built-in uh, different types of fills that you can customize in all different ways. And with this here, it's even easier to take one design and manipulate it in so many ways. Uh, it's really cool. It's there's so much fun that sometimes you forget to sew. I spend more time just playing with the designs, but it's, it's really so much fun. I also now can change the order of my embroidery design. See, often I put several embroidery designs together in a, an embroidery field but I put them in the wrong order and I don't realize that until at the very end. And so now I could actually change the order. You also can zoom in to 400%, so it gives you the ability to really align those designs. Uh, and there's just so much room to work with uh, with that large embroidery hoop, so you can make a whole arrangement with these designs. Uh, I have greater control for arranging, for aligning designs, both like designs or, or different designs. Same way I do with the fonts. Uh, center, flush left, 
plus right, I can go uh, to the middle of the screen, all with these quick keys. And so uh, much easier to do your editing with embroidery. Then I love the fact that I can work with all kinds of uh, thread brands, uh, including Floriani, which is one of our most popular ones. And so I can actually have the, the design be uh, shown in the thread I have in my hand and I can change it individually. I'm not stuck with one brand. I can use multi brands and do that. So it really gives you the ability to audition. But the other thing is the, uh, the color visualizer gives me the ability. It's like a built in artist. So it can give me examples of other color options so that I can copy that because I don't have the ability to think through that myself. I can't visualize different colors or different shapes, but using this tool, I can choose which one I like the best. So let me go ahead and show you a little bit about this here and let's uh, we'll have some fun. So let's look on the screen here. And on the screen, uh, let's, uh, we'll go right to embroidery. And uh, so first of all, there are so many different categories and the screen works so beautiful where I can just go back and forth. I also can change the size of the icons just like that because it is a capacitive screen like what your phone or tablet is. So you can change that beautifully. And what I wanna do, let's bring in this design right here. And this is a dragonfly. It's, a, it's actually, that's gonna be almost 12 inches uh, tall. That, that's a big dragonfly. Um, but I wanna take this here, let's size them down. It actually has one of the most powerful sizing programs that I've seen. So I can actually take this here and I can size it down 70% smaller. I can go up 200%. So that dragonfly is, I, it would, that would scare me if I saw the size of that dragonfly coming here, but let's go smaller. And to give you an idea, um, this is maintaining the same quality. Um, let's go ahead and rotate it so we can see it across here. What I mean by the same quality is that it actually has the same stitch count. And what I have here, I have a sample of another design and it's not just the, um, we can look on over here. So what I have here is a stitch out and it's not just what are built in, it could be designs you import in. But see, if, if I was to take a design and enlarge it 200%, generally what that's gonna do is just open up the stitches. Well, what happens, this actually adds stitches when I go larger, and when I go smaller, it decreases it. It also gives me the ability where I can even override and change the density. Some of your designs, if we look on the screen here, some of your designs are too dense and the ones you download and so you can reduce them a little bit and so you have a lot of power here to modify that but let's go ahead and look in uh, to this here and this will be a fun one to choose use the color visualizer because uh, there there's a lot of uh, you know with with dragonflies they can be in all different colors and so let's go to color visualizer and i want to go and work with random okay and so the benefit with random i can do automatic or manual and so with manual i could choose from all different types of, of colors. So let's say I want to have a mixture of greens and teal. See, what I'm doing is I'm choosing different colors. And what would go good with that? Um, let's see here. See, I have a hard time with any colors here. Uh, let's do some purples. Um, now, now we're just making up stuff here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's, let's add a yellow in there just to, just to say we did, and then a dark one. Okay, so. I don't know what that color is going to look like, but when I press OK, it gives me many options. And what happens is I can take and choose, press that heart, and that, that's going to be one I might like because we're going to look at our favorites later. I think I like that one. OK, so this is nine. Every time I press refresh, I have another nine options that are completely different. And what I can do is I can keep doing that. And let's do this one. And now I can look at my favorites and I can look at them large. So I'm auditioning. That's kind of cool. Uh, not so much on that one. No, not that one. That I like. That one I like. So, but I really think this is the one I like. So now I can select that. And so see how that's, that's a wonderful tool in choosing this. Now, what I do though, though, is I, I want, I like this burgundy color and it's a brand, it's a Floriani thread. And uh, what happens a lot of times is it gives you options of the thread that are one that you don't have. And so I can look at the different parts of this design. So there's part of the, the, the um, body. Actually, there's one, but that's not the same color. So I want to change this color number to it's, uh, Floriani 01. 
9092. That changed it to that burgundy, and I can press OK. And now that has that burgundy in there. See, I can actually audition, and I like that color, so I know I'm going to use that. And so that is really a cool feature on this here. Now let's go into, let's, let's go ahead and delete that dragonfly. And I mentioned the different fonts it has. First of all, it has a, a wide array of beautiful fonts, but let's look at some of the big ones here. So I, I brought some stitch outs just to show you. This has seven of them, and they're, they're giant. Uh, so let's first of all go to, let's go to this right here, this big font here. Okay. So you can see, look at the size of that. These are great on pillows, on bags. Uh, if you want to see some, one of the other ones here, this one is gorgeous here. So let's do this one here. This is the B. I like seeing that because you really can see the detail here. So you have seven beautiful large monograms. You also, let's go back to the, the fonts. You have and I like that I can see the see how you can move the screen so I can see all of them at one time, or I can see it as a half screen. So you really have a lot of control here. You have a wide array of, of fonts, some that are really tiny that stitch out beautifully. Um, but let's take this here, and I'm going to um, use my exclusive script. And so this is a beautiful, I would say it's one of the best scripts I've ever seen. And what's nice is when I select this with the name. See how it really flows beautifully? And so I can take this here and I can modify this as a whole. So let's go ahead and go to, I'm going to actually change that font right there. And I can go to spacing and I can adjust the spacing of that. But I want to adjust it as a, at an individual letter. So you see it now it's just that individual letter and I can because a lot of times you're you're kerning things and that I think that that letter B see how I'm moving that down there that really flows beautifully now I'm going to switch to the entire and then I can do sizing as a whole so I just size it all but it maintained that here maybe that's not as good as I wanted to but see that just an, uh, gives you an idea of what you can do with this here uh, now let's go ahead and I'm going to show you again uh, how we can create within a design with on the screen here. So let's go here and I've got so many different things. I think the quilting category has a design that I want to use. It's this one right here. Okay. Now I like that again I have the, the full screen here. I select that here. I can also see it here. I can get information on it. See, that shows me the size, the, how much time, the color that's recommended. And then I can set it in the hoop. Okay, so I have all that here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take this here and I want to turn it into an applique. So now I can actually, and the reason I like doing that is because I can actually take that and embroider and then place it with an applique on it and actually have a, have like a batting below it so it builds up to have more more dimension there and I can choose the size of the applique we're going to uh, save what it, where it is there so now that's the applique but then I'm going to go and take and do an outline which what's great about this I have the insider outline but I'm actually going to do an outside and I'm going to have a little farther apart and this I'm making a shape that I'm going to send to IQ Designer. IQ Designer is my customizing function where I can create my own designs from shapes or from artwork or from scanned in images. And I, what I'm doing is I'm taking like a cookie cutter shape of this whole design and I'm holding this and it's, it's actually expanding larger. Okay. And the, the, the longer I hold it, the more of a gap that's going to create. And so Let's go ahead and um, stop about right here. And I go to memory. And that sends that as a stamp to IQ Designer. Now, I'm going to add and I'm going to go to IQ Designer. And I'm going to bring in a shape. There it is. 
Now, that's just artwork. Okay? It's, not, it's not a design yet. But I can take this here and I can choose from all different types of motifs. Oh, let's say we want to do that one right there. And I can take, let's do a color here and bucket. Okay. So now when I go next, it shows me this little flowered stitch. It's in the exact shape brought out from that one design. Let's go ahead and set it in the hoop. And see, I have not lost my position. So what I have here is I've got the applique. I've got this floral motif. Let's go one step further. Um, what they have is they have automatic stippling that they've had for a while. And uh, where it does stippling around that here. I went the wrong way. Let's we do choose different sizes. OK. I also have echo quilting, which is kind of cool. And you can adjust the space of everything. But now I can access all my background fills that normally would require me to go back to IQ Designer. So we've got so many of them that I can access. And um, just some beautiful designs you can work with. Oh, let's, let's see. Let's try. That's kind of a quilting pattern. That would be a contrast. I, who knows? We, you always got to select something to see. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can choose and make a distance uh, from there. So that basically caused a gap right there. And then I can also make the size closer together. together. OK, now I press OK. Then you see the original design there. But you, you get the idea what you can do. now. That's not exactly what I stitched out here, but I want you to see this is uh, some of the patterns I had the same pattern having fun here. So we're going to see. So there's the in initial one in the center. And what you see here is there's the applique and I did it with darker fabric. But again, a lot of times I'll do the applique and I'll have some batting in there. So it really puffs out. There's that's a little different motif, but something similar and a different fill. And so and here it is with the echoing. It's hard to see that, but those are echo quilting there. And then here it is with stippling. All from these, these quick reference buttons, you can change your designs into so many different ways here. Now, the final thing I want to show you is the projector, because the thing is, I still didn't answer the question. Why would you need a projector when you embroider? Now, if you look on the hoop here, this is that giant uh, ship. It's good. The detail on this is amazing. I love this here. Uh, because it reminds me of this of a, of a painting that my father had in his office here. And so I want to add something to this. So this was already stitched out and let's say you rehooped it and I want to add something, but I want to position it just right. So we go to embroidery and we're going to go to some of the exclusive designs and it has under the coastal category. It has this compass. OK, and I think this is going to be really cool. And I know I want it in the top corner. So let's move it over here. And now let's go to embroidery. Now, if I turn my projector on, what happens is that it projects, in this case, you just see that the projector is white. But it's, it's not where I want to put the design. So let's look back at the screen again. And you see, all I have to do is move this over here to where I have the design. Because I, I know initially where I wanted to put it, but I don't know if it's going to look good. OK, so now we look on the fabric. I can see this. I'll move this out of the way here. I can see that image there and it's I can see that it's stitched out and that's a compass. I think this could be kind of cool, but I can see it's not lined up with my design. And so I can move it from here. And see, I can see it here and I can see it on the screen. See, the point is, is that you see it on the screen, but you never know where it's going to stitch here. And this is wonderful. And I can actually rotate it by by even point. I'm, I'm right now I'm rotating by 10 degrees, but I can do it by a tenth of a degree. So because I maybe want it. See, I'm, I'm kind of angling that, that that's the area I want. I want that just there, maybe up a little more. But you see, I know exactly where that's going to stitch before I stitch it. And that's just one example of the many that gives us the advantage with this this built in projector. So let's go on from here. So many cool things. I can sh show this machine for a long time and just have fun. So let's go back here. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I, I love all the things you can do uh, by customizing your embroidery, both the embroidery that has the, uh, well, the designs built in, but also designs that you can bring into the machine. 
So it's not just embroidery that this machine excels at. It is the top line for quilting and sewing. It has 65 square inches of workspace, 13.1 inches to the right of the needle, five inches tall. So it has plenty of room to get the large quilts in there. It has a special scratch resistance, non glaring uh, base, which is nice because a lot of your machines, the, the lighting glares at you. So this is really a wonderful satin finish. Um, and it has the automatic fabric sensor. This actually, the machine senses the thickness of the fabric and then it actually will adjust the pressure and the tension to give you perfectly formed seams from heavy to light. It also works well with your uh, synthetics like Lycra and elastic. Again, it senses the thickness and it will adjust for you automatically. Uh, even working with like um, t-shirt knits where you have ribbing and that ribbing has like a, 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 a texture on it and it stretches in different ways from the t-shirt knit. This will sense it and it'll make it so that your, your fabric control is amazing. It also comes with the digital dual feed. This again, even takes your control to the higher level. And one of the things that I, I was watching from our demonstrations yesterday is that because this is belt driven and because you can adjust the speed of the belt, sometimes when you're quilting, it, the fabric is pushing forward. You can actually have it where it compensates and, and adjusts the fabric so you have perfectly formed seams so that, that the wave of fabric is not pushed over and pinching. And so what happens is that it gives you more control for quilting, for garment sewing. The digital du dual feed is amazing and it does come with this machine. Um, it also has, with the projector, the ability to project your stitches right on the fabric. And so you can audition those stitches, making changes to them before you sew them. Uh, you also ha can take, there's so many stitches, uh, I, I even lost the count, it's well over uh, uh, 1,300 stitches, I know, but 234 of them can be embroidered in the hoop. Uh, and so anything I can put in the hoop is better, so I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, then the projected guidelines. You have guidelines which you can set up for a quarter inch, which is shown here for chain piecing, uh, but also you can take it and change the, the, the size or the angle to, in this case, the uh, uh, six degrees are perfect for Y seams. I'm actually gonna show you this demonstration later because if you've ever done a Y seam, the most difficult thing is that you have to start a quarter inch into the fabric and that way, and that's hard to do. This makes it so it marks perfectly for you so you can do perfect Y seams. The 90 degree um, guideline makes it so it's easier to, to turn those 90 degree corners, which sometimes it's really hard to make sure you're straight. And this shows you exactly where the pivot point should be. Now, let's say we're doing decorative sewing on, a, in this case, a sashing of a quilt. You can actually adjust it a certain space and you can use this with any type of, of foot. And so that shows you exactly where it is. The grid line, the grid line is adjustable and I, I use it for echo quilting. And so whatever guidance you need, these guidelines really make all the difference in your sewing and quilting capability. The other thing is that it will project a needle point or a reference to where your needle is going to drop for when you're free motion. And I, what, I, what I like about this is I, it gives me more focus of where I'm doing free motion and it makes me better at free motion quilting. So that's something that uh, a lot of people aren't aware that this machine has. Uh, you even have the ability where if I'm doing applique or sewing, I can put this little uh, sticker and it will actually, the machine will stop automatically at the end of the stickers for applique and for precise sewing. Uh, it's just another way they've taken the, the technology to another level. So let us show you more. I, uh, Kathy has some exciting things to show you and then I will finish up with some more things to show. So Kathy, are you ready? I was born ready, George. Awesome. So let's talk about some of the sewing features. George has handed on a lot of the sewing features with this machine, but everything on this machine is kind of supersized. So say you don't do buttonholes every day, but you want to do a perfect, beautiful buttonhole. Here's the buttonhole foot that comes with this machine. The machine uses the camera to see how big the button is. So literally, when I go to my button, holes. I have so many choices. Now the machine will build is has a built-in feature where it'll tell me what each buttonhole is for. You even have a searchable guide, an operation guide on the machine. But 
What's even better is pictures that you can reference. This is the Solaris Inspiration Guide, and it has four full pages of just how to do the all the different buttonhole functions. This is a pretty important part, don't you think, George? It is, and I'm going to talk about how... You're going to talk more about it? Without this, I am, because they actually might even get this included. Oh, okay. Well, that's it. That's it. We're, we're just like regular TV. We have teasers now that's for the right. future. <laughs> so we're going to be, we're, look for us on CBS next week. So, <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about how you can do a practical application of what George just showed you. So embroidery is great. Man does not live just by embroidery alone. There's a lot of times, and I brought a sample, is there's some quilts out there. I don't know if maybe you might have tried some of these in the past, or you're looking to try them in the future. A lot of times, this is beyond the color purple. And you can't see it very well here, but let me tell you what it does. Uh, this is Jenny Haskins, and what she does is she has a lot of little designs. She puts them together, and then they're connected by decorative stitches. So when you do that, you can take a design that's smaller and you can add a lot of bling to it, right? So this pillow, I have decorative stitches coming around the corner. Now, I want my machine to be my partner to help me to do this because I'm sewing a decorative stitch around a corner and I want it to be perfect because I don't ever want to take out a decorative stitch. So let me show you on the machine how I can bring up decorative stitches and I can manipulate them a little bit to get exactly the one I want. So I'm going to come over from utility stitches. I'm going to go to character decorative stitches. Now, as George mentioned, there are so many stitches to choose from. I'm going to look and see. I mean, I could be here all day picking a stitch, but I think I'm going to try an audition. This one looks pretty good. So I'm going to try 639. Now, it brings up the stitch in the exact size that it's going to be. Of course, I can modify that. So if I want to modify that stitch, I come over here to edit. I can see just a single stitch. I can make that lo wider, longer. I can do all the kinds of modifications to that stitch. But I think I want to be super clever and I want to add another stitch to it. So let's look and see what 637 looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I can see this one's a little bit smaller than that one. I have the capacity in this machine to edit just this stitch when I join it with that one. So because it's highlighted in light blue, that's the one I'm working with. So I'm going to take this and I think I'm going to make this one individual stitch just a little bit wider. There. That looks like it's a little bit more in proportion to me. I'm good with that. Now, the other thing that I can do to really customize my stitches is I can join these two stitches and the machine is literally going to show me exactly how long that stitch combination is. So I can take that, I can make it a little bit smaller, a little bit larger, I can make it a little bit wider or smaller, and I can see if that's going to kind of work with what I want. Now, what's really important is I want to see how this is going to look on my fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the camera and I'm going to audition. I'm going to audition this stitch on the screen where I have all my other choices here so that I can see. Hmm, that looks pretty good, but I'm turning a pretty radical corner up here and I can see that if I do that stitch combination, that might not turn the corner. So right away I can tell that might not be the great stitch combination for me. So let's kick that one out. Let's pick another one. Here's 633. Hmm, that looks pretty good. Needs to be flipped over. Of course, I have all my controls right here. I'm just going to flip it over to the other side. Now, I want to see if one individual unit's going to work. I can literally touch this button here and see one individual stitch. Mm, that looks pretty good. Let's change that a little bit smaller. That's great. Now, I've seen it up here. Let's take it a step further. Let's see with that projection system what it looks like on the fabric. That's where I can really tell. So I'm going to come back down. I'm going to touch my projector up here. And what that's going to do is that's going to show me that stitch on my fabric. So let's take a look at what that looks. And what a great camera crew. They've given me a split screen. So you can see what I'm doing here 
and what it looks like on the on the machine. So you can see that what how it what it's done is it's projected that stitch down on my fabric. Now, I can't see it too good in that light blue. Let's change the color of that. So I'm going to change it to red. Ah, uh, yellow looks, no, no, black. I think yellow might work. So I'm going to touch it one more time. Yes, I can really see that yellow coming up on that pink. Can you see that? Now, I can see that that one stitch is going to look pretty good. Now, with my touch sensor pin, these are all controls that I can use to enlarge that stitch, modify that stitch right here on the fabric. I change the color of it, but I can always change what the background looks like too. So if I touch this, that'll show me the background in gray, white. Uh, I think I had the best choice at the very beginning. So there's that dark background with my light yellow stitching. That's going to show me exactly what I need to do. So now, if I made the best choice, that's great. But what if I didn't? What if I don't like that? I can preview other stitch choices. So I can bring up individual stitch choices. I can go, maybe I like this one better, maybe I like that one better. I can literally select that stitch from right here as I'm looking on my fabric. That's going to save you so much time because you want to be able to see your choices on the fabric. You're going to be happy if you made the right choice. I like the one I have. I'm going to touch set. I can change the width of it. I can change the length of it. But what I really want to do is I want to add another feature to help me stitch this great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to the machine and I'm going to engage my guide light because it does a little bit more than George showed you. So I'm going to come over here back to the screen and you can see that now. I'm going to touch my projection light. Now my projection light will, will it's like, it, it's like a, a laser guide light, right? And George showed you that on the pictures, but it's really an amazing feature that I can actually project that light. I turn it on and you can see over here, I have that light green light coming through the middle of my design. Now, I think I would like a line on both sides of my design to really help me stitch around that corner. So I'm going to take this original line and I'm going to move it all the way over to where it's going to be the uh, uh, right here on the top of my, of my design line. So I'm going to move it all the way over. I can see it on the screen and I can also see it projected on my fabric. You have a wide range in here. So if you're going to do any type of quilting or stitching with a really wide design, you really have the option to see both sides of it. Okay, so now I have that line on the very outside edge of my design. That's great. But I want to add another line on the inside. Before I do that, though, can you see how long this line is, this projection line? I'm going around a corner, and that's really not going to help me too much. I have the option to make that line a medium length. Touch the button like you mean it, Kathy. A medium length, and I can actually make that line super short as well. I can even have that line just be a dot, but I think I want a medium line. So I'm going to come back up there, and of course I can change the color of it. Now let's add that second line. I come back here to my second line, and I have the option to align a grid, and then there's that angle George told you about. I'm going to add that second line, and it's going to show it to me on the screen and also on my design. Now, that's coming right down the middle of my design. I want it to be on the bottom. All I have to do is tell the machine, bring that line all the way over, and I want you to see something on the, on my, on the way went over there. It actually, when you hit the quarter inch mark, it's literally going to show you that in not in, in, in imperial measurements. So I can see that that's a quarter, but I want my line to go all the way over to the right. Now my line is over here, and I hope you can see that it's on the very bottom of my design. Now, I want to do these one at a time. So I'm going to come back here, and I hit the closed screen so I have full access to editing, but my light is still shining. 
I want a single design because I know when I'm turning that corner, I'm probably going to stitch one design at a time and then pivot. I wish I had a pivot feature, and I do. All I have to do is come back here and touch this button to highlight it, and that engages pivot. What pivot does, it means that I can sew, and when I stop sewing, the machine is going to leave the needle down in the fabric and lift up the foot so I can completely pivot around where I'm going to go. That's going to work perfectly for me. So I think, mm, I think it might be time to stitch this. So if you can see down on the, on the fabric, I have my design projected down. I've put on my end foot because the machine recommended that, and I can now see exactly where that's going to start. I lower my foot. All I have to do is sew. Because I've selected just the one design, oops, before, because I've selected just the one design, it's going to stop at the very end, and it's not going to continue on. So let's just sew this. I don't have to worry about stopping after just the one motif because it's going to automatically do that. And if you can see, it's going to lift up the foot and I can see exactly where I need to switch my, switch my fabric so that my teeth is, teeth is right on that line. Now, I'm going to take this off. When I put it back on, I can see exactly where that needs to start. So that's great. Because I want to show you one quick more thing. I'm going to cut my thread. Now, I did this in decorative stitching, but you can use this with the utility stitches as well. If I wanted to quilt, I'm going to go on back to my utility stitch screen. I'm going to turn off my projector light, turn off my projector, and just go to utility stitches. So I'm going to go to utility stitches, OK, and I'm going to do some quilting now. So. I want to turn off my projector because I don't think I'm going to need that. I am going to customize my, my guide light to be perfect for my quilting. I don't think I need that subline. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come only to my main line. I'm going to have it right in the middle so I can see it coming directly right over where my line of stitching is going to be. One more click. There we go. Zero shows me there. I want a long line this time. I think I might want it in red. And I am going to use that other feature that I haven't used before, and that is my 90 degree line. Now it's at 90 degrees. I have my seam allowance on there if I need it. And over at the machine, you can see I can bring it on up and I don't need my camera, I don't need my stitch to be projected because it's just a straight stitch. I'm going to go right down the middle of my, of my line here. And when I come up, this is be a, this would be a great time to use that where it stops exactly where I want. Okay, there I am. I have pivot still engaged. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, and I can see, even though I'm in the middle, I'm right on that line. And that means my corners are going to be a perfect 90 degrees, and I'm going to look like a super quilter. And I think that George can take this one step further, can't you? I can, but I would like you to do something real quickly. What do you need? Can you turn uh, the color to green? I think that it, it will show oh, better on the camera and do that again. Certainly, I am so sorry. Because you had me, you had me mesmerized <laughs> at that. I've got, I, I want them to see this here. So, but, but, uh, so I guess as well more. as the 90 degree, the, but both both sides to turn everything green and do that stitch again because it was so exciting. I was going, it's going to line up, it's going to line up, and that that looks so cool. So let's let's okay. see here. So there you are. So there you have green and green. Uh huh. And so I'm going to come down to the middle here. And this then let's time, zoom in on that ca camera, guys. I have pivot, so okay. I can turn it. And now this time, I'm just going to use the seam, and yep. I have it perperfectly at a yep. 90 degree angle. So zoom in on that that uh, 90 degree line, and maybe green wasn't the right color. Now we're doing that. <laughs> but I want. I have other choices. Yes, yeah, so, so you can see. Now move it, swivel it back and forth so they can see the line move as you, as you do. See, see, that's what I wanted them to see. That is your 90 degree line. That's perfect. And that's awesome for doing, what, what are you doing, stitch in the ditch or your decorative borders? See, when you're doing modern quilting, a lot of times they have those perfect 90 degree angles. And that's all the rage yeah, right now. Yeah, Who so, knew quilting had rages? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> now, I'm going to use something similar and I'm going to do 
uh, the, the Y seam. So let, let me go ahead and sit down to the machine here. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. This is, we're not gonna do anything you can do, I can do better. So <laughs> we won't go into oh, songs. Oh, come on. Because <laughs> you're awesome. That was, that was great. Uh, so I'm gonna switch it back to sewing. And again, um, we can leave the embroidery unit on when we sew, uh, or, or it does actually slide off here. Um, but what we wanna do, what's the deal about Y seams? Okay, so if, if we were to piece uh, several triangles, these are 60 degree triangles together, and we were just to piece them, the problem is by the time you keep going around, you end up with almost a knot of so much fabric right in the center that it, it's so hard and it just, it just turns into, like the whole thing turns into a bull. And so when you're doing Y seams, what you wanna do is you wanna actually start um, right a quarter inch in to the fabric, okay? So how is this gonna help us, okay? So we're gonna to go to our quilting category on the screen. And first of all, what I like about this is it actually has, I'm just using a regular foot, uh, but it actually has pre-settings where I have a, it's a quarter inch to the edge of the foot. Um, and I'm gonna turn on my guideline. And on the screen here, I'm gonna first of all move my, and we're gonna use a subline as well. And we're gonna do a 60 degree. So you got, you got 45, you got 60, you got 90. And I have it for a quarter inch. And uh, what I want also to do is I wanna have my main line I'm adjusting it so it's right where the needle is. So I have, I like that. And then I turn on my subline to be 60 degrees and we have that right there. Okay. And so what I want is I want a quarter inch here. Okay. So there we go. All right. So what we have, I, I, if we look on the fabric, I have a position. So I actually have two lines. I've got my line where I'm sewing the seam. I always like seeing that and then a quarter inch. Now you see over here, you see the same thing, but that makes it so that I can line this up. And if I put both those triangles in there, I know it's starting a quarter inch into the piece, not on the edge. And that's going to uh, help me do this here. Now, if we, if we close this, I also want to point out that we have, I have it set where it's doing the automatic tie off just in a single hole. Because when I do this, I don't wanna have, I'll have it do a reverse, but I need to tie up that seam. And also on the screen, um, I have the ability now to have it where it automatically drops the foot and raises it if I want to. I, I don't want it to raise, I, I wanna control that, but I want it to drop. And so what that does for me, when I turn that off here, okay? So now let's look on the fabric. So I see this here. I see that the, the two uh, seams, and if I just take this triangle and line up the triangle into the red line, now I know when I take this here, I'm gonna press on my foot pedal, and what happens with the, when it does that, it's gonna automatically lower and do a tie off right there. But it started right at a quarter inch in, and now I can go ahead and piece forward. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and uh, piece off here. And now, so what we have here is we have, if we look on the fabric, and I'll just go ahead and trim that, I probably should trim that to begin with, is we started a quarter inch in, and that makes it so that I can, I can take and fold this, and I'll finger press this, okay? Now I'm gonna take my next one right here, and I'm gonna lay it on top of here, and so, what happens is we want to make sure that we start again. I kind of, it's kind of cold here this morning, so my hands are not functioning right. <laughs> so now I want to make sure, I, again, I don't want to start right on the edge. And so what this is going to do is it's going to position this. So again, I have, we can see that, little, I'll come in on this side here so you can see. I have positioned that red line so that I am not, right on the edge of the fabric. I am a quarter inch in. I press on the foot pedal because the foot will automatically lower and it still will, will tie off. So that way it ties off wonderfully. Um, so it's not gonna uh, come unraveled. And then I continue to piece. So again, that, that guideline 
makes it so that I can do what would normally be a difficult function. Y seams are not easy to do, to work with. And so when we look at this, let's open this up here. Now, this is come, and, and now we have that fabric. There's my Y seam. And the way it works is that the fabric starts laying one under the next. And so by the time I keep going around, it's gonna be lying flatter. So that is where that 60 degree guy line makes all the difference here. So I, just, I get excited about uh, technology helping me out. And so I wanted to show you that. And so let's go on to our presentation. So as you see, this machine is truly amazing. So it also has the uh, quilt sashing borders built in and they've added more of them. So you can actually do a border on your quilt 118 by 118 inches. That, that's pretty much a king size. And what it does is it actually, we have 15 borders added from what we already had. So it's 30 in total. We've got uh, single color borders, two color borders, hexagon borders. Now, Kathy showed you some of those hexagon designs, and these are wonderful to enhance that. Um, and what happens is you actually choose the size of both the, the width and the length of the quilt, and then you can also choose the size of the um, border. And it calculates everything you need uh, for this. It actually cuts up the designs, and you tell it what size hoop you have, and it uses the projector. It projects the starting corner. So when you stitch that out, once it's done, it projects the, the uh, next border and you're able to move and manipulate the projection so you can adjust the angle and position. And I love using this with the new uh, optional uh, quilt sashing frame, which I'm gonna show you. But you truly can quilt an entire quilt doing this. And the borders, see how I can line them up it doesn't matter if I'm perfectly straight on when I hoop it, I can manipulate it and use the projector to show me exactly for continuous borders. It is very, very forgiving and it's so much fun. Um, so we do now have in stock the new uh, quilt sashing uh, hoop with uses the magnet uh, uh, that to hold the quilts in place. And I want to take a, a moment to show you this. I have one set up over here, so I'll walk on over. So first of all, here's the quilt. I'm going to sh uh, show a couple things here. Here's the quilt that I did the border on. And, and I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and take, and we'll zoom in on this here. You can see this is a uh, two color border. And I did the entire, this is actually the one I did uh, the uh, video on. I did the, the entire border around here. And I will tell you that um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the best quilter because I'm not very patient. Uh, when I did the measurements, the width here and the width here was not the same size. Um, I don't know how that happened, but that was me, it's my fault. But when I was working with this, the machine has some wonderful tools that allow you to ease in or, or to make longer or shorter. And so it ended up being perfect uh, after all. But this, this uh, hoop is, is almost like a quilting frame because it's not flat. It actually is a, a shape of a triangle here and I like this, the way it works in compared to, um, there's, there are some magnetic hoops out there that are completely flat. And when it's flat, the fabric can pull through. See this, those triangle shapes work with these magnets that are in the sa same shape. And the benefit here is I can take this and let's put this underneath the quilt. And so I can feel that there and I would adjust it. And so you have a total of four large magnets and then four small ones. And so what I can do here is I can take this and I'll just put, let's put one right here. And even though it's on the seam there, it holds it wonderfully and right there. And see, I can also come right here. And see, what, the thing you wanna do, if this was one complete ring, it would be tough because it would adhere to it and I'd have to manipulate. Where this, I can still move my, my hoop a certain way and I have, I, I have room to work with it. And then I can add the smaller ones. But here's a cool thing. Let's say I leave these two here and I, I'm, I'm done stitching or quilting here and I wanna move to the next section. So I'm gonna take these off. And this is kind of a cool thing here. I'm actually gonna move this. And so this has maintained the same position here. And I was able to move the entire quilt and I can either have 
the large ones here and the small ones on the side. But you can see this truly, it's, it's an amazing, amazing hoop. You're able to do so much with this here. And even like on this, I went all the way to the edge. A lot of my quilting when I did the borders, I did that. And because you have so many points of, of hold on, the, on this quilt, it, it's, it's secure. So I mean, that, that's not coming off here. So I love that, that new hoop. It's a, it's a must have, and it makes embroidery and quilting even more fun. So let's go on with our presentation. I've got so much more to show you. All right, that's, that's so cool. I love that hoop. Um, so now, can you imagine a machine where you can create your own designs without a computer? That's what the IQ designer built into Solaris 2 gives you the ability to do this. It has 42 built-in fill patterns. Now I showed you a few of them uh, when I was working with the embroidery, but imagine being able to take shapes, uh, both images that you scan in or built-in shapes, uh, and changing the background and the color and the, the, the different uh, types of angle. You truly have so much that you can do all within the machine. So you can take a, a, an idea that you have to create a design and bring it to fruition. Uh, and it truly gives you the tools to do it. Um, you can take your fills and you can uh, manipulate by the angle, the size. There's also a new option of random shift. So you can kind of do some distortion on that, which is really cool. So we're going to go and, and uh, go to, to Denise here, and she has a project she's going to show you. Denise, are you there? I'm here, George, and thanks for having me. You know, I've been digitizing since 1992 when the software was in DOS. And, you know, back then it was a little frustrating, and digitizing is kind of a scary word for some of us. But the great thing is we have it built into the Solaris. And I'm going to show you how to make a really fun wall hanging. And what's really neat about this is George is going to get the clip art for you posted so that you can download it and make your own. And I have more than one of these. So you saw the Valentine's. There's the St. Patrick's Day. And let's go to the Solaris so I can show you how to make this. So right now we're in front of the machine and a few things that you're going to need supply wise. You're going to need the clip art or some type of clip art. So this was a, a clip art that had three gnomes on it and I created it to have one gnome on it. So I've put it on the frame here and you can see that the frame actually has the three gnomes, but we're only going to do the little one and we're going to do a little bit of editing on him. So I'm going to attach this frame to the embroidery arm. I'm going to touch IQ. You can use your fingers. There are different tools that you could do to do this. I actually have over here on my table, I actually have a mouse set up here. So sometimes you'll find that a stylist or something like that works well for you. Other times you might try the mouse. I love using the mouse when I'm digitizing. So I've got the clip art on the scan frame. And the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to scan it. So on the machine screen, we've got a few icons that we're going to choose from. Up at the top, there's a leaf and it has an arrow going to the right. When I touch that, down here at the bottom, you have three options, image scan, live scan, or illustration des or line um, design or illustration design. I'm going to do the illustration design and I'm going to scan it. Now, you would take it from a USB stick because you're going to save it um, on a USB stick on your uh, computer. So I'm going to scan. And this frame's going to move. So make sure that you have everything out of the way so that when that moves, nothing bad happens. Nothing gets hit, nothing gets run into. And so it's thinking and it's going to go across that scan board a few times and we'll just let it do its work. 
You'll notice the light really brightened up here, so it gets a nice high definition scan. This is when you could play music, sing, get a cup of coffee, doesn't take very long. Once it's done, what we will do is we'll edit the design. The other thing, I have some Floriani thread, I've got my finishing touch um, bobbin thread wound, so I'll be ready to go. Now you see the little guys on the screen. I can grab a hold with my finger, or again, I can use the mouse. And the mouse will work just like a computer mouse, where I can go in and I can crop out what we do not want with the little gnome. So I'm gonna crop real tight on him. Oh, we want his left hand though, because we wanna put some things in that. And I'm going to tell it okay. And again, it's thinking. One of the things you'll want to do is be able to look at the different uh, maximum colors. There are no more than 10 colors in this, the line type size. You can remove the background. So I'm gonna remove the background and tell it to retry. And we may find that the lighting here in my studio, I have some pretty bright lights on right now. The more light you have, the harder it is to get a clean image, but I've saved that same image that you're going to use on my sewing machine. So there's our little guy, didn't turn out too bad, but I'm gonna clear all, and I'm gonna show you how you'll bring in your design. Now mine's in the pocket, yours will be on a USB stick, and there's my little guy. And this is exactly how he'll come in for you. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge him. The little wall hangings that I made, they're pretty big. Uh, they're about 17 inches long by 15 inches across. And so they fit in a very specific space in my house. So we're going to enlarge the guy or girl. And there it is. Now there's nothing over on the right hand side, but it, I see that it actually has resized some open space there. So I'm gonna click the select tool and I'm gonna use the select and I'm just gonna drag the mouse over here. And if there's something there, it will go away and there's nothing there. So that's what I wanted to see. So I'm gonna select the little guy and I wanna put him in the middle of my screen. So I selected him and I'm just gonna place him center or I could go to the rotate and tell him to center, but see, it still sees something on the right-hand side. So I'm just gonna manually move him. And he's pretty good size. Now, a couple things I want to show you on the close-up of this uh, little guy. Here in his beard, I actually made the beard an applique. So you could go through and make the beard an applique, or on this particular one, I used actually the Lana um, thread that's kind of a wool and it has some texture to it. So there's lots of things that you can create texture with this with your um, threads also. So the very first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna move in close here now so you can see the little guy. There we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start coloring him. Now we may have holes, but we won't know until we start coloring. So I'm going to do a St. Patrick's Day gnome for the other side of my Valentine gnome. So I'm going to pick okay after my color. It's on a fill stitch. The region size is 20. That's the default because it's in a black box. We'll go into the decorative fills later, but I just want a regular fill first. And I'm gonna tell it okay. 
touch the fill properties and the bucket, and then touch inside the hat. And I've just filled the hat. And that was pretty easy. Now, let's do the garment that he's wearing just a little darker. And I'm going to do the arm. And oh, the arm has a hole. So we have some undos. Love undos. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to touch the hand, which is a pan. And that's right at the top of the screen up there. And what that will allow me to do is move down and look at this arm up close and I see there's a hole right there. So I'm gonna go to the pencil properties and I'm gonna just fill in that hole. And then I'm gonna go to the fill bucket and fill the arm. Perfect. I'm gonna use that pan again and let's go to the right hand side while we're zoomed in and let's fill the arm here. And there's a little spot right there. I'm going to fill that and that looks good. Let's go to the bottom part of the garment and there's a few spots through here. So we're going to go to the right, that one, and now I'll use a slider bar at the bottom. I see a hole here, so I'm actually going to go back to that line property, fill that, and then go back to the fill bucket. Oh, there's a hole, let's find it. So that's what I would call probably the biggest thing you need to know. If it fills in everything, there's a hole somewhere. You have to have an island, no peninsula, no opening. So there's our hole. Oh, and I didn't get it quite where I want it, so let's undo. Perfect, and let's fill that in. I love it. Now, the bottom of the gnome here, his outfit has a little trim on it. I kind of refer it to like a trim on a Santa Claus outfit, but I don't want it white or a uh, color that makes him look like Santa Claus. The good thing is he's in green, so we're good. So I'm going to do it in so that you can see it on the screen, but I'm going to do it with the stippling stitch. So this is free motion stippling looking stitch, and I'm going to fill in the, the bottom there. I'm going to pan over to the cuff and notice the cuff filled with green. And that's okay because all I have to do is draw this line right here, connect those, go to the fill bucket, fill in. Oh, there's still a hole. So I have to look a little closer. So I'm going to even zoom in more. Look at, we can zoom in to 1600%, which is pretty big. Oh, I see it's right there. Now let's fill that cuff. There we go. We'll move to the other side. Fill this cuff. And now I'm going to zoom back out to 100%. We're going to do his beard next. And I like to do the beard with the circles that are in the fills. These circles here are great. But if I scroll down, I've got circles number 38. Love these. We're going to do them uh, the lightest color, which is a light gray, but you can stitch it any color you want. That's what's great about this. So now he's got some texture in his beard or he has a bird's nest. I'm not sure. Now let's go to the flesh color. And let's do that as a fill and do his hand his nose, his hand. Now, all we have left are his boots. So we're gonna go to brown, still going to use the same fill. Do his boots and the boot on the right, we need to zoom in because guess what? The heel of the boot must have an opening and it's right there. So we're just gonna draw a line across there and we'll make the heel a dark brown. Rusty color, that looks good. Slide the slider bar. Now, that was pretty quick to digitize the little gnome, 
but we can even do just a little bit more. He needs something on his hat and he needs something in his hand. So the great thing is we have some pre-made shapes in here or we have embroidery designs that we could add to this. So I'm gonna go to the pre-made shapes and let's look through them. So here, if we're doing Valentine's, we have a heart. If we're doing 4th of July, we have the star. We have an egg shape if we were gonna make him an Easter gnome. The second one, these are closed shapes. So here we've got a few different shapes to choose from, depending on what you want. This might be fun on the top of his hat. Let's see what we have in the open shapes. So under the open shapes, we just happen to have a clover. Now, I don't know why this one is open, but it's really closed. So we're gonna select this shape and we're actually going to put that clover in the little guy's hand. So we need to really resize this down. So you can do a long hold on the resize and take it down as small as you need. And I do it about one to one and a half inches. That looks good. We're gonna rotate it 10 degrees at a time. Put that baby right down there on his hand. But before we do that, the outline of the hand, we'd like to have green. So we're gonna go to the line properties at the top. We're gonna do a uh, triple stitch on the clover. Touch the green, tell it okay. And go to the fill bucket on the line properties. And when we touch the clover lines, we've just turned that green. So now we need to move that clover down, but while it's up there, let's fill it with green. The same green we did the outline. And that works for me. I'm gonna select it. So I'm gonna draw a box just around the clover. Slide it down to his hands. Now, you know, my eyes aren't getting younger here. So let's zoom in again because we'd like that just to touch the hand like that. Now, that clover looks like it's in his hand, but we can even make it look more realistic in his hand by just taking the line and drawing a line so that there's a tail of the clover coming out from the other side of his line. So I'm gonna zoom out and we're gonna do something on the top of his hat and something in his hat. And in fact, you know what? I'd like to texturize his hat also. So I'm gonna go back to those specialty fills. Decisions, decisions. There's the leaves. I think those will look really good. Bucket, fill. Love it. Now I'm gonna add a shape to the top of his hat. Let's go back to those open shapes that we had. I like the little swirl pieces here. This one is really fun, so let's do this. Again, we're gonna to need to resize it. So I'm gonna slide it up, put it on his hat, click the resize, and I think we'll rotate it a little bit too. So that looks pretty good. Let's rotate it. And we're going to turn that specific line into candle wicking. So again, we're not going to have it touch the hat yet. And in fact, I'm gonna move it way out here. We're going to do candle wicking, fill bucket, touch that little piece. Now let's select it. Move it down and I love that it only selects a full design in there. So when I have that design pulled away and that's why I did that. Close, I'm gonna do something inside of his hat. We're gonna go back to that clover because you know, it is St. Patrick's Day, clover. We're gonna go back to the clover, but we're gonna take the stem off of it. So let's resize it back down. It'll be a little bigger than the one in his hand. That looks good. 
we're going to go to the eraser this time. Now, the eraser is a great feature, and you can change the size of the eraser. And you can have a square eraser or a round eraser. I'm going to leave it round. But again, I'm going to zoom back in because I need to see where I'm at. Touch the eraser, and let's get rid of Ooh, little too big. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's undo. Go back to the eraser. Couldn't remember what size I used because I know that if you do the round, one little spot. There we go. Let's zoom out. Select just that clover. Fill it with a fill stitch and a darker green. Let's select it and move it to the hat. Forgot to fill it. There we go. And I'm gonna rotate this a little bit just to have some fun. So rotate one degree increments. Place it there. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go to our next screen. But before we do, save early, save often. We're going to put it in memory because if we need to adjust something, we have the opportunity to do that. I'm going to save it to my machine pocket and click next. Now here I have the ability to change sizes. You know, one of the great things when you digitize something in the Solaris um, you can change the size of it, you can change the density, you can change rotation. There is a lot that you can do within the screen here, and I love that ability. So here, this all looks good. I'll use a light uh, gray or medium gray for the outline. Sometimes the black is a little harsh. You may find that you like it, but I'm going to go through. This is the fill stitch on the hat. And I'm going to make this 55, 50% down as small as I can. And it needs to think to recalculate the stitches. That looks good. I love the candle wicking here. Uh, the little guy here. Let's see what we can do with him. Maybe we're going to change the direction of him. And we can chain things together that are the same color. So if this particular clover was the same color as this, touching the chain would chain them together and give us the ability to change things all at once. Let's change the direction of the fill stitch. So let's go to 75%. And then I'm going to change the texture of the beard to be smaller. And then you need to think about what is your saying going to be if you want to add a saying to your little wall hanging. Because when we go to the embroidery side, we add the text right there. I'm going to go down to 60%. Tell it OK. Let it calculate the stitches. And then we're going to set it. There he is, pretty cute. Let's set. It's going to convert it. We know that. There it is on our embroidery machine. I'm now going to save it on the embroidery side. So I was in the digitizing IQ design side. Now I'm in the embroidery side. So I'm going to save it there. And here we could change the colors if we needed to. I can slide him up here and I'm just going to add a little text to him. And I'm going to change the size of the text to medium. It's not a typewriter. I have to think about where the letters are, even though I know my alphabet. 
I'm going to return and go to the second line. And go to the third line. But here I'm going to change the text. Love this one. And then we'll move him out of the way and grab the text. <laughs> Maybe. Select. There we go. And there's a quick little um, wall hanging. Now, a couple things about the wall hanging. I'm going to put the camera back on our little wall hanging piece here. So here's our little wall hanging piece. I've actually taken and I've blinged it. So I've added a button up here at the top where the little swoop piece is. I've added some rhinestones and some rhinestones in the center of this. And then I went to my jewelry box and I found some jewelry pieces that were either broken or something had happened to them and I've added that to it. I did this on a canvas. So it's got some um, substance to it. And then when I put the top piece on, I went and got some buttons out of my button bin, made my little pieces for that. Even when we go to the other side with the uh, Valentine one, this was a broken pin that I used. And then up at the top of this one, where all of the little pieces, the hanging pieces are, I added some jewelry to that. So I really, really had fun making these little guys and I'm hoping that you'll enjoy making them on your new Solaris that maybe some of you are going to take home because it's a great little project to learn how to use the IQ. So I'm going to go back to George. What do you think? Wow, um, Denise, I'm, I'm really inspired. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see all kinds of gnomes everywhere and I think um, we, I may, I'm inspired to grow my beard longer just by seeing that gnome. So <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of inspiration. Uh, now, it's not just that the uh, Solaris 2 can create its own designs. We can actually use the IQ designer for quilting in the hoop. Imagine a machine that you can hoop fabric and take a photo of it or a scan of it and place your stitches right on the screen that it actually stitches out on the fabric. It actually does things that a lot of your long arm quilting machines don't do. You can also use it for patchwork quilting. The, the quilt I just showed you uh, with the magnetic sashing frame, the stitches on it, this is the actual uh, quilt. I'm able to draw right on the screen. See, I take a picture of the, the area, I draw on the screen and add certain motifs to it. Uh, so I, I truly enjoy quilting in this hoop here. So I want to show you some techniques on that. So first of all, this has been a popular panel. It's by Hoffman Brothers. And if you look close, you see all the areas of the petals have different fill stitches on there. People uh, want to uh, use what's called long arm quilting machines with automation. And they take 10, 12, 14 feet of space. I can quilt right on my Solaris too. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, another sample over here on the other side um, is, and I'll come over here, is actually one I made and I have a little, some deeper colors. Okay. Uh, so what I have on the screen, actually uh, in the hoop, I've hooped the same panel, but I, I don't have the center actually stitched yet. So you can see I've got different fill stitches and see you can change the shape and the angle here. And so what I do is I go on the screen here and I can go to image scan. And this actually will take a, a scan of the hoop area. And so um, th this is going to, what this is going to do and you can choose uh, the, how high of a definition you have. I have a standard definition. 
because I, I, what I can do now is I can take and place my stitches right where I want them. And this, this is truly amazing because I've even taken fabric that, has, that had a pattern on it and actually copied a pattern and turned that pattern into embroidery. Now the hoop that I have on there is the 10 and 5 eighths inch by 10 and 5 eighths inch. That's a new hoop that, that comes with Solaris 2. And it also has this metal clamp. If we look on the uh, hoop here, it has this metal clamp, which makes it much easier to hoop and clamp uh, my quilts. Okay. So now on the screen, I'm going to make this darker so you can see there is my, my panel. If we look closer and we can actually, um, it's kind of, so you can actually see the stitches right there. So what I can do is I can take this and I can take and I can use a stylus or I'm actually just going to use my finger here and I can actually come and place an outline and draw it there and go around in that shape. So if I come back here, so what I can do is I can come around and draw around the fill area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that because I have already done this. It's kind of like a cooking show. I'm going to actually bring in that same shape already. So, so when we look at this here and let's um, zoom back or not, I, we'll take, you can see as I make that face, I've drawn in the area that needs to be filled. Okay. And so I can take this and I can choose my, the type of fill stitch. Okay. So I have all those new fill stitches. Now, if you look at my quilt here, you can see, actually the one I stitched, you can really manipulate this right here. I made it real small. I have a different fill here. You know, it's, it's whatever you want to do. I, I put a lot of stitches here. The one that I actually Denise did that we showed over here has less stitches, but let's take this here and I, I want to take, let's try something new. So many, so many patterns. What do we do, Kathy? George, there's no bad choice. Okay. So he, he, here's some flowers here. Okay. We'll do that. And then uh, let's take my paint bucket and fill it in. Actually, let's ch change the color because... Yeah, if you make it yellow, you'll see it better. Thank you. Okay. So if we take this here, so you can see, I fill that in. Now we go next. I think I, I need to go darker. Sorry. I don't think yellow is going to do it. Oh, well. Okay. So there it is. Okay. Now I can go to the next screen and this is where you can have a lot of fun about changing. See, that's the fill area here. I can actually take this and I can make it closer together. I like to see the pattern. I can choose if I want it to be in a light fill. This is something new where I can do a, a, a double to triple stitch or a single stitch. So that's going to be more like a quilting. Don't forget, George, you can also shift that fill pattern within that area as well. That's right. That's the, that's the shift right here. And so you can actually take it and move it like if I want more of the floral in the area or the new random uh, uh, shift, I can really distort it. But the end result is I can set that in the hoop and that area is going to stitch right there. So it truly is so easy to quilt in the hoop using the IQ design feature. Well, you know, George, What's that? Um, if I may, you may, Denise has sent us this quilt and I just saw this quilt a couple days ago when I first got here and Denise has done some stuff that's pretty amazing. Okay, show us. Okay, show okay. Us. so um, I don't know if I could copy her, but don't tell her. I just I'm not love this her. quilt. So she's made this quilt and it's kind of ocean sea life and she's taken a lot of the built in ocean life designs and she's recolored them uh, probably with color visualizer and made them all kinds of fun colors and the colors kind to match the colors in her in her fabric choices for the blocks that aren't embroidered now that's great but what she's done here is she's taken one of the new fills that has the shell theme and she's made her own fabric in there now the beautiful thing is you show that there's a light fill and a more and a more quilting type of a yes. fill but this is the standard that goes over it two or three times with thread and you a really really striking contrasting design now let me show you how that happens up here on the screen so i'm going to come to iq designer 
and I'm going to come to select all of my different fill patterns that are under this tab and this tab. And she chose, what did she chose? She chose this shell. So I'm going to choose the shell and I'm going to say OK. And she used a darker color. I'll use a darker color too. And I'm going to say OK. But you know what? I don't think I have a pro. I, I think she did a whole screen. She filled up that hole. How yeah. big is that hoop again, George? It's 10 and 5 eighths by 16. Oh my gosh, that's probably the size yeah. of this. Yeah. So I'm going to come here and I'm literally going to touch the screen and I'm going to fill that entire hoop with that design. Now, this shows me kind of a representation to it of it, but I want to see what it's going to actually look like in stitches before I make a commitment. So when I go next, what the Solaris does that's pretty amazing is it instantly renders what I see is what I'm going to get. Now I can tell that she did a whole bunch of little shells here and I don't have that many. What I see is what I get. So I can come to the size and I'm going to make it smaller and I don't know if 75 is what she used. Let's see because what we see is what we get. Mm, that looks pretty close. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, she went all the way down. So let's go down here. Let's take it all the way down to 50%. Let's see if I guessed right. And boom, shakalaka, boom, <laughs> through the magic of television. That looks about what she did. Wow. So now if I want to stitch this out, all I have to do is go set, OK, and it's going to send it right to the machine. Now, don't forget, this sent this to the machine as an embroidery design. And I can take this as an embroidery design, and I can still manipulate it if I want to, because I have all the full editing features I do for any embroidery design. Just because I created it in the machine doesn't mean I can't change it. But here's something else clever that she did. I noticed that in her quilt, she had this background fabric that looks like a soft net right? She's used it in several of her blocks. Now, I don't know if she ran out of fabric, but over here, she's created her own background that looks a heck of a lot like that fabric that she chose. So she used a fill in a lighter fill to create a, uh, a fabric that looked like what she had. So this is a white fabric and she's modified mm. it. So let's see how she did that. So I'm going to go back to IQ Designer. And this time I'm going to bring in a fill and it looks like she used that seaweed looking fill. So I'm going to come in here, but I don't think this is as big as that full hoop that she used before. So I have a choice. I can have a, I can, I could choose a hoop size. I'm going to guess that she used the nine and a half by nine and a half. So I'm going to say, okay, that automatically gives me the size of the hoop that I think that she used. So I'm going to come back here and this time I'm going to choose that seaweed looking fill. And it is so many, so many. I probably passed it. You probably saw it before I did. Where is it? There, there it is. is. There it is. That one. Okay. She used like an orangey color. I'm going to use an orangey color. I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to tell the machine that I'm going to fill this hoop with that design. Now that's just a representation to show me what I put in there. When I go to the next page, I can tweak it. So I'm going to go next. And the Solaris is going to render it for me so I can see exactly what I have. Once again, looks like she made it a little bit of a different size. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go up a little bit. Okay. And it instantly renders it and shows me it's a little bit bigger. Now, George briefly mentioned that there's a, there's, there's a feature in here where you can kind of tweak or morph the design. So that's down here where it has a couple little circles that are kind of different shapes. So if I touch that, I can go with a random shift and I'm just going to pick a two and I'm going to say, okay, because I want it to look like my seaweed has a current coming through it. And you can see that that kind of tweaked my seaweed just a little bit. Now in palette, which is the software that you can use in conjunction with your Solaris, you have a random shift of up to five. So I could take this and really make it look crazy. The software palette 
can let you also create your own fill design that you can bring on into the machine. So that's pretty cool. So there it is. I uh, don't want to shift it, but what I really want to do is I want to make this lighter because I don't want it as heavy as this one here because she put lettering on the top of it. So I'm going to come down to these four circles and I want it to be a thinner design that I can use it for quilting. And I'm going to say OK. So it automatically renders it by do choosing the thinner option. You're not going over every you're going over the minimum number of times that the machine needs to create this design. It can be used for quilting. It all can also be used for making your background fabric. I'm going to say set. I'm OK. And that's going to send it to embroidery. Right now, if I wanted to, I can come in and add the letters just like she did. So I don't think I'm going to copy your quilt, but I think I'm going to take these <laughs> ideas, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to make me one that's a little bit different, so she doesn't feel like I've copied her. But that's pretty cool. That's truly George? amazing. George? I, I love the way you looked at that quilt, and then you can determine how she did it. It's like quilting it's forensics. It's reverse engineering. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's reverse sojourneering. There we go. So this is such an incredible machine. I mean, the Solaris II, sewing, quilting, and embroidery is top of the line. Um, Baby Lock has asked me not to share the special price online here, but if you call us, we'll go over the details. 1-800-865-9664. Now that will go to voicemail, but leave us information of what kind of sewing you do, where you live, and we'll, I'll have one of my uh, staff members, the one that's most knowledgeable about the type of sewing and interest you have, contact you, and they'll discuss the different options. 